Hey everybody, my name is Kate and I'm here with Salons for Life with Sam, who is our uh, artist fellow for uh, one of the upcoming salons. And Sam is going to tell us a little bit about themselves and their work and what you can expect at their salon. So um, Sam, who are you? <laughs> Uh, hi, Kate. Thank you for having me. Um, I am a, a dancer, an artist, a yoga instructor, uh, originally from Lower Michigan. Um, I did my school in New York State almost exclusively, though. I got out of Michigan as soon as I could. And I've been in the New York area for about six years now. So I, I've been here making art, teaching yoga, uh, and, and I've been working with a lot of different age groups. Um, I've performed in, uh, in the city as well professionally. Uh, so I've, I kind of just have been jumping around doing all sorts of different things. Wonderful. And um, what can people expect when they practice uh, at your salon? So at my salon, uh, it, it's the part two uh, to uh, this uh, series entitled The Object of My Affection. And it's talking about our relationship to material objects. And I've been working a lot uh, recently in the notion of nostalgia and our connection to our history, our connection to our past, and what that means for people. And that's something different for everyone. And I've really struggled with this concept of nostalgia. Uh, I, I don't tend to keep things. I tend to get rid of stuff as quickly as I can. I don't like to hold on to a lot of things. But I know that's not true for everyone. And so I, I wanted to understand that a little more. So at this workshop, what I'm interested in doing is investigating people's relationships, specifically to objects. And they can be anything, a connection to you know, different pictures or um, maybe keepsakes or jewelry that have been passed down or silly things that you've kept from your childhood, uh, silly things that you've kept from your adulthood. And what I want to be able to do is have you take an opportunity as the, as the, uh, as the session participant to, to look at your relationship to this thing, to take household objects in loose parts play and, and begin to understand your relationship to things in general better, but then specifically with this one object. And so what we'll do is we'll use some household objects, cardboard, paper, any old fabric, um, tape, glue, uh, scissors, coloring utensils of any kind, uh, dry food, sticks, stones, anything from nature that you can find, just literally, and almost anything can apply to this. And what we'll do is we'll spend some time organizing the stuff, manipulating the stuff, so you get a little better sense of how to play. Because I think that's something that we forget to do as adults, and play is something that's been really important in my practice. And so we'll start by just playing. Then we'll move into a little exploration of, of actually learning how to make things and then, and then we'll really dive into uh, this relationship that you have with this object and look at the, the memory surrounding it. Now I say this knowing that sometimes the things that we begin to investigate may yield some really interesting results. Sometimes you find you reconfirm these connections to these things. Other times, maybe you'll find that you no longer need this thing in your life. Maybe the memories you get aren't so pleasant, but it's an opportunity to start to explore our relationship to materials in our lives and, and to see whether or not we, we need them. And if we do, great, we, we can reestablish that connection. And you know, I think for a lot of people, there's room to explore these objects as maybe representative of people. You know, sometimes we get handed things, some objects that are handed down from us. And, and that's a really important and beautiful connection that we can make. And other times we hold on to things and we pick things up and suddenly we have no idea why they're in our lives. Why do I still have this one random trinket that's been sitting on my shelf collecting dust for years? I no longer need it. In the words of Marie Kondo, it no longer sparks joy. And um, I, I, I wanna be able to explore that and explore it in a really fun and hopefully meaningful way. It sounds like it's a fantastic salon, especially for this time of transition that we're in, that we, we definitely had a, a past of, of what life was like pre-COVID, and now perhaps moving forward, this could be a really useful 
um, an artistic skill set for people to, yeah, like you, like you really eloquently said, um, explore the relationship to the material. And if it does help or hinder in this transitional process. Yeah, there's this, there's this notion of what to keep, what to throw away, what brings me joy. And I know that that phrase has been going around for a few years now, but really I think that there's gotta be some deeper unpacking. And when we start to investigate these things, it, you know, it's, it's very much a privilege to decide, I'm gonna get rid of this thing. It's, it's a privilege to be able to sit with an object and then decide you don't need it anymore. And in this day and age, I mean, objects are becoming much more meaningful now. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, but there was a huge run on toilet paper not so long ago. Toilet paper has suddenly become a commodity. But what happens when you take the toilet paper roll and then you manipulate it and turn it into something else? Hmm. What happens when you, uh, you take the empty box uh, that used to hold pasta and you manipulate that and turn it into a piece of art? And what happens when you take all the old string that you've collected? Uh, I know my aunt Gail years ago just had bags and bags and bags of yarn. And she loved to knit and crochet. And when she passed on, I inherited it. And I couldn't just do everything with it. I, I couldn't make a million blankets and a million sweaters. I just didn't have the time or the energy. It wasn't something I was totally interested in doing. I just kept holding on to this yarn. Well, what if I could do something with the yarn that would be beneficial? Maybe I play with it for a little while, and I did. I made some things, but ultimately it just wasn't the best fit for me to keep it. So maybe in that instance, when it's something like that, that you can give away, you can donate to someone else, uh, someone else can, can start to use it and, and explore it. In the instance of things that maybe you just decide to throw away, maybe something's broken, maybe you just don't have the resources to fix it, and maybe it just really is time to get rid of things. I know that people hold on to some old technology like cables and, and old TVs and old computer monitors. And those can be really hard to get rid of. Uh, sometimes people hold on to uh, just the strangest little trinkets and photos of people maybe they don't even like anymore. Like they recount these stories of like horrible relatives or even horrible friends. And those are always fun stories for me to hear because then I, I ask them, okay, that's really interesting that you kind of are angry at this person, you're upset. Why do you keep this photo then? Hmm. Why, do you, why do you have this in your life? If it just reminds you of this negative time in your life? Well, the, because this, that, and the other thing, they don't have an answer. Maybe it's time to start coming up with these answers. And, and through this workshop, through play, uh, which is something else that I've studied along with dance and yoga and theater and writing, uh, maybe we can begin to explore some of these relationships and begin to tell the stories. Because the thing that I do keep, the thing that I do hold on to are stories. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an avid book reader and I do love buying books. Don't get me wrong, I have my things too. But I'm more than happy to donate a book or give a book to a friend uh, or go to the library and reread the same book dozens of times over and over again because I, I love the story, I love the meaning, and I'm, I'm able to hold those in my heart. So I don't need the actual book in front of me. It's nice to have, it's much easier to hold on to a thing and let that thing be the symbol rather than hold on to the memory itself. But if we can sort of manipulate that relationship with the thing itself, maybe we can make room for other things to come into our lives. Because that's the other thing. Anything that's made in the salon, because we're going to spend some time making stuff. Anything that's made, you don't have to keep. You can get rid of it. You can throw it away. A lot of the stuff, hopefully, is stuff that you find in your home so you can recycle it e easily if that's something that's available to you in your neighborhood. But ideally, what we're doing is we're trying to understand our relationship to the things in our lives. And this one thing in particular that, that I want everyone to bring is something that evokes nostalgia, something that evokes a, a, a sense memory, uh, maybe a, a story or a conversation with someone that you love or someone you hate, who knows. Uh, maybe it's recipes and it, you get memories of food that you used to make at family events. It, bring that and let's hear those stories and let's understand what they are and share them with each other. 
And if you're able to get rid of this thing or rid of some things, then maybe you can make room for someone else's story or make room for a new object to come into your life. Or you keep it and you suddenly have a newfound love and respect for it. And now you have another memory to pack on top of all the wonderful, joyous things that, that are already associated with that object. You now have this weird internet workshop with all these people who also have their stories that they shared. And you get to carry those stories too. This sounds fascinating. And I love the concept of play and just and, and repurposing um, the object is the portal into the body, it would seem. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. Um, and uh, we hope to see you all there. What is the exact day? Do you remember? <laughs> no, not what, off the top what, of my head. What it's time in September. anymore? I, I believe it's September 12th. I can double September check that. But we're we're going to post the correct. All the dates and information will be in whatever information box is near this video. Of that, you can be sure. <laughs> and this is part two of the series. Um, the, the first part is, I believe, um, on August 29th. Yes. Um, so please log on to salonsforlife.com. Um, we're going to be posting all of this info on our social media channels, along with Sam's wonderful interview, pre-interview today. Um, so we look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you, Kate.